Welcome to Face the State. I'm Ariana Bennett. Thank you for joining us. Well, there are 300,000 veterans living in Nevada. Of those, nearly two thirds are over the age of 55. Now, since most of them live down in the southern part of the state, much of the focus on veteran services happens there. But there is a push to bring more services up here to northern Nevada and a couple of major projects already underway. And Wendy Simons with the Nevada Department of Veteran Services is here now to talk about all of that. Wendy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, Ariana, thank you for inviting us so that we could share the story and the, the good news of the future northern Nevada veterans home. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about. But, but first off, um, I think it's important to know there's a difference between what you guys do, the State Department, versus um, the federal VA. You want to kind of outline that Gladly. for us? You know, there's, there's constant confusion with us in the department. Nevada Department of Veterans Services is actually the state agency. It's in the governor's cabinet, um, and it's been a department since 2013. But curiously, it was the Nevada Office of Veterans Services established in 1943 during World War II to assure that all veterans returning from the World War actually had access to their benefits. So the department has evolved over time. The purpose of the department is to ensure that veterans have education, access, and support in trying to secure any benefits that they have rightfully earned through their military service. So that's what our department does. Whereas the federal VA is the kind of blanket umbrella that actually uh, directed the state agencies to be developed in 43, um, but it provides the medical service and the disability benefits and all of the other actually federal benefits that an individual is entitled to. And there are a lot of benefits, probably more than many, many vets realize. There are so many that are untapped. You know, I joined the department two years ago as the deputy director. Prior to that, I was in the private sector, healthcare field. And even I, when I first joined, I thought, my goodness, there are so many state and federal benefits that folks aren't accessing due to the fact that in the past they may have uh, been told, no, you're not eligible, thank you for your service, now you are retired. Um, but lots of things have changed over the course of time that now make people more eligible for benefits, and it's really important that they proceed forward to secure those. So worth checking back in, even if they've asked before? Exactly, exactly. If they were ever denied, they need to check back in. And we have uh, veteran service officers that are actually highly skilled and accredited uh, that can help those folks navigate that vet veteran benefit system. And there are a lot of veterans, you know, who aren't in the system at all, right? Correct. Correct. You know, curiously enough, again, when we look at the stats of 300,000 vets statewide roughly and approximately 80,000 that we know of in northern Nevada, those are the ones that are somehow uh, in the VA system. But we've discovered currently in, a, in an initiative that we have over 1,200 veterans that are not even noticed in the system, 400 of those World War II. Wow. So what's your goal? Our goal is to ensure that every, every veteran, regardless of where they live, has the support and the access services to secure those benefits that they're entitled to. And it's more than just health care, right? Yeah, it really is. There, and, and you know, the, the VBA, which is the Ven Veterans Benefit uh, arm of the VA, it does a wonderful job. Uh, Sheila Jackson, who's in the area, is the new director there. She's amazing. Uh, she streamlined a lot of the programs because we always heard the stories of veterans not being able to navigate the system or they're denied or they didn't fill out their claims properly. So we work closely in concert with the federal VBA too. Okay. And I understand a lot of vets um, who maybe served in peacetime don't feel like they're really eligible for benefits. You know, that's why we also have a departmental push to ask, have you served in the military or have you served your country? Because many will acknowledge they served, but they don't consider themselves to be veterans. Okay. And we yeah. want to we want to get them to come out. It's a All right. big, big push. Now, yeah. the majority of vets obviously are seniors. And as the population ages, as the baby boomers get older, they're going to need more services, specifically in health care. Is that a concern that you have? Absolutely. You know, we have the Veterans Home in Southern Nevada in Boulder City. It's called the Nevada State Veterans Home, and that's a 180-resident 
veteran nursing home, skilled nursing facility. Uh, but the brotherhood and sisterhood in that home is amazing. And incidentally, state veterans' homes were established during the Civil War. They were called the old soldier homes. Um, but now in Nevada, that home was built and opened in 2001, runs at capacity, and we have close to a 687-bed need for additional nursing facility care. The thing about nursing care, though, is not it's not your grandmother's nursing facility. It's actually very engaging, interactive. It has the camaraderie of military service. It serves 75% veterans and 25% spouses or Gold Star parents. And we actually, when we talk about old veterans, we've also had a number of younger veterans who have had a military service connected injury that are rehabbing in the facility to go back to the community. So this is happening at the facility down in Southern Nevada. Correct. And now we heard in the governor's State of the State address, he wants money allocated in this budget. I think it was $43 million in this budget to build one of those in Northern Nevada. Right, and you know, I'm so glad you asked that question because uh, in 2006, the state applied for a federal grant uh, that's called State New Home Construction Grants Program that the federal VA has. They give a two-third match of the construction costs if the state comes in with a one-third match. So in the last legislative session, 2015, Governor Sandoval put into his budget the, the required one-third match, which passed through the session, and, and you know that's part of the governor's commitment to be the most military and veteran-friendly state in the nation. So that was approved, moved the Northern Nevada up on the priority list for the state, the federal money match. However, the appropriations aren't there in the bucket of money at the federal VA level. Um, it, it, so there's, there's also a request uh, with the Office of Management and Budget, OMB, to increase that amount to all state veterans' homes. Well, what the governor did is he didn't want to wait anymore. We know we're going to get the reimbursement in the future from the feds for the two-third, but he said every year that we wait, the cost of building it goes up considerably, about a million to a million and a half. And in addition to that, we're not accommodating our veterans who really have the need. So that's why he put it in his budget this cycle. And, and I was so heartened to see when he introduced the budget, the legislators all in the, in the House stood and applauded. So we're anticipating strong support to move that forward. And it's already mocked up. We have a rendering if we want yes. to go ahead and take a look at it. Yeah. Uh, it's an interesting thing because it looks like it's got little pods um, where, where vets can be, you know, they can have their own little space. Correct. And, and basically what happened in the federal grants, um, the VA adopted what's called the Community Living Center model, which is not the traditional nursing home layout of long halls and a sterile environment. They wanted more household kinds of designs. So uh, we worked with Van Wert Bugatti Architects and a CMAR, construction manager at risk, called Q&D Construction to lay out the plans for the actual building and, and construction of the home. It, it, oh, let me tell you, being in healthcare all my life, this is knock your socks off, amazing. <laughs> I am just so in love with this plan and it's, it's very easy. It, if anything, it's gonna encourage people not to necessarily be in wheelchairs if they don't have to be. Uh, they'll have access to cooking in their household kitchens. Uh, it's, just, it's just a tremendous model. And then second to that, we have a town hall. And the town hall is being designed with a restaurant, a sports bar, a coffee bistro, a gym, which is also the therapy center, and, and a meeting, meeting room, which can convert to a movie kind of a theater. But the whole purpose of that is to really bring the community and the veterans organizations to the campus so that our residents in vet, in our veterans in residence can actually still engage in what's going on in life. Okay, now quickly, because we only have a few minutes left, um, where will this be built in North oh, Nevada? Oh, perfect question. It's on state land, on uh, Nevada Adult Mental Health Campus. It's north, north of Deeney Townsend and Lakes Crossing. It's right off of Kitsky Lane. Its address is gonna be number two 
Kitsky Lane. So if you go to DMV to get your license, you're also going to be able to turn into the driveway right off of Kitsky into the campus. It's going to have a parade ground and, um, you know, uh, restorative therapy gardens, all kinds of things. We're, I mean, obviously you can tell I'm very excited. Absolutely. Okay. So if the governor gets the money he's asking for in the budget, is that enough to cover it? Or Absolutely. You, okay. Well, yes. That's, that's great. He so, planned accordingly. I'll tell you, the governor is so committed to this and we are so appreciative on behalf of our veterans. On the other side, if this doesn't pass through, what kind of situation are our vets in? Where are they going to go for this kind of care? Well, currently, uh, there, there is nothing close in the service area. There's two nursing homes that have been approved by the VA, which has very strict criteria, and uh, they take a limited number of veterans. There is another nursing home in Carson that also has been approved, and one in Auburn. So our veterans are currently having to be sent out of state when they're discharged from the VA hospital here to Auburn, but also to Redding and Idaho and Utah because there's nothing up here to accommodate those 96 residents that we're going to be able to accommodate. And to reiterate, these are the sickest ones, the ones who need the most help. And it, help or restoration, you know, because we're going to have a pretty aggressive thera therapy program. And the other piece that's a critical need in this area, Ariana, that, that the VA hospital has declared to me is memory care, the Alzheimer's memory care unit and the behavioral unit that there's nobody up in the north hand, hand offering that to the community and to our vets. Yeah. Okay, well we're just about out of time, but before we go, um, what's your message to the community about this? Do you need any help? Um, just their support as it goes through the legislative process so that the legislators are validated in their belief that this is an important initiative and an important expenditure on behalf of the state. All right, Wendy, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you. I sure appreciate yeah, it. Thanks. Well, coming up on Face the State, we now know that there's a need for a veteran's home in northern Nevada, but when sick vets come to Reno for care, their families also need a place to go. I'll sit down with the executive director of the Veterans Guest House right after the break.